Hello, I'm on the Minetrack.net server. I'm on the Starbase 117 build. I'm currently lost. Uh, yeah, I built this and uh, <laughs> it has been a really long time since I've been on it. Janko is looking for something to do, so I asked him to look through it and see if there's anything he could do. And uh, I got lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sucks. Uh, what can I tell you? Um, I design them good. <laughs> I think I'm on deck five, but uh, because of the design, it could be deck two. Who knows? Uh, I'll just take the lift up. Uh, well, the hallway here up. Uh, back when I built this, we didn't have fly mode, uh, or creative mode for that matter, in Minecraft. Uh, we just had, uh, you know, put water in these things or ladders. And I put ladders. I did not want water. I did make them 4x4, four four, though, or 3x3, three three, excuse me, for the purpose of, uh, at some point, you know, using command blocks to move between them. Because we did know that we were going to get command blocks at that point. But we didn't know we were going to get flight. Go figure that one out. Anyways, yeah, these things here should have been control panels, but again, everything's all dated. Uh, this is a very dated build. It's almost two years old. Uh, it's still, you know, one of the largest builds I've made. Ooh, transport. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. I did this uh, um, block by block. Uh, I used a little bit of BMC edit for the uh, circles, or the circumferences of the whole design, but the rest of it is all pure block by block. Um, it took me almost nine months from start to finish. It is very tall. Um, it, it may or may not be uh, post or pre... Uh, it might be pre-height uh, limit change. Then again, it could be post-height limit change. I don't remember. Um, I'd have to measure it again. I do remember that it was shorter and I did make it taller at some point and that may have been post height limit increase but yeah the ship is ex excuse me the station is a very dated build uh, I would love to see somebody come through and update it uh, hint Django <laughs> um, I don't have to say the word it's spelled out right there uh, but yeah you know it's builds like this uh, you do on your own you know you don't expect anybody to ever look at them or let alone download them or like them if you put them up for uploads and you know, but people do and but you know you do it because you enjoy doing it and that's what I did I built this because I had nothing else to do um, at the time I was really really sick uh, ooh, I'm outside um, very ill and uh, had nothing to do and this is what kept me going uh, I just We'd wake up and work on this and go back to bed and wake up, work on this, go back to bed. So it kind of holds a special spot in my heart for me. It helped me get through a really tough time in life. Uh, if you walk around it or fly around it, you'll notice that there are a lot of little things I got wrong. But like I said, I built this all by hand. Uh, we just MC edit for like the largest circle part. And then I kind of ringed it in as I went up. There are some changes. Uh, a couple of guys like Blee Bob, I can't remember his full name. Oops, excuse me. Oh yeah. Um. Freedom to build is yours. So, anyways, I just gave uh. Django free will to pretty much do whatever he wants on this. I have many, many copies of it, so I'll, um, you know, if something goes wrong and he wants it re-imported, I'm sure we could talk to M. Heller about doing it, but there's so much room on this thing. I Literally, it could be a hub on it unto its own. Uh, it is, you know, in probably the second largest build I've ever done. The largest being the uh, Nebula-class starship. And but I had the hull to work with on the nebula. Monumentously uh, imported the hull and, or excuse me, designed, imported the 3D hull into Minecraft, and then I took it and resized it and made the uh, nebula class out of it. Of course, when I resized it, I thought I made it bigger, and I 
did make it big enough actually so it's you know half again too small compared to the actual size so M. Heller was gracious enough here recently to import a new hull a uh, corrected size hull of a nebula class and that'll probably be a project I'll take on at some point in the future but not right now I'm too busy working on the Enterprise C and all my many other builds this is the Savo Island this is a custom kit bash um, build of mine this was uh, basically it's the underside of an Akira flipped um, in retrospect I, I could have done some things differently but overall I really um, wanted to come up with a unique design um, to denote a uh, if you look up history of Sa the Battle of Savo Island um, my great uncle was on board one of the ships that was sank there and my grandmother never told us and when we found out that we actually had a relative who died there and was considered a naval war hero for his actions um, you know I just wanted to kind of commemorate it and that's what I did here I built a starship and I named it Savo Island I could have named it the Astoria which was the ship he was on the uh, destroyer he was on when it was sank he was a gunner's mate and his turret took a direct hit and him he was badly burned and uh, the last sighting of him by one of the survivors who actually wrote the book about the battle um, saw him leaving the ship uh, being thrown overboard as the ship was being sank or as the ship was sinking and he was never seen again which is a shame because my grandmother um, it was her only brother, her only sibling, and she lost her parents in the early 20s due to, well, her father died in a uh, green silo accident, of all things, and uh, her mother died of uh, during the plague of the 1920s. So she was adopted by family and, you know, by an aunt and uncle, where she, and her and her brother were separated, and she only saw him intermittently. And, then the war broke out and he passed away in the war and she met my grandfather had many kids and lived is still living unfortunately she has Alzheimer's my grandfather passed away about a decade ago he was probably one of the smartest men I've ever known in my life he used to work with uh, people like Howard Hughes and um, so yeah, you know he had a very high security clearance um, my father uh, followed in his footprints, our footsteps. He uh, became a very uh, skilled machinist, technician, engineer. Probably one of the smartest guys you'd, if you've ever met my father, you would realize he's one of the smartest guys you'd ever want to meet. Uh, and me and my brother, we're both uh, gifted in that realm. My brother is really smart when it comes to mechanical stuff. I'm a little bit smarter on electrical. And my nephews, they're both, well, I have four nephews. Uh, two of them are real adept at this stuff. Uh, the other two are adept at other things. Um, not sure exactly what, but something. So I'm going to respond to Lupi. Or, oh, excuse me. It is Jenko is talking to me. So got any lounges that need building on this place? <laughs> oh yeah. My spelling is really bad. It's one of the one of the traits of our family. That and I have horrible handwriting. This is the fly oh yeah, I remember this. I thought I gave this one a name. I probably did and it probably got lost. Anywho. Uh, let's find our way out. I think we can get out from down here and around the corridor somewhere. Uh when I misspelt that horribly. <laughs> Lots of laps. <laughs> Yeah, he's giving me a hard time for my spelling. Yeah, I don't blame him. My spelling sucks. But, that's no, interesting, you know. Certain things run in families. Uh, yeah, I like building starships. Who would have ever thought, you know, I was like 10 years old. was the first time I was in her. Well, I was way younger than that. When I was introduced to Star Trek, uh, neighbor kids said, Hey, look at my starship. And this is the hangar of the Savo. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And that was that, you know. I liked Star Wars, don't get me wrong. Uh, it, it was literally a watershed moment in, I believe, uh, world history. Uh, it set the bar so high that many movies after that um, had a difficult time even coming close to, the, to it. 
uh, it still holds a very special spot in everybody's heart um, from that from that era from that time I was uh, seven or eight when it came out uh, I didn't see it till I was in my teens I saw Empire Strikes Back before I saw Star Wars uh, I really loved Empire Strikes Back it's one of my favorite movies Star Wars I really enjoyed it but I felt uh, that the acting in it was uh, lackluster at best um, but you know it had a lot of depth to it and a lot of little things that made it so special and of course uh, the special effects that came from it uh, set set a new standard and that's why we have digital effects now while we have computer games like this now is because of Lucas and what he pioneered the technology he pioneered or helped to pioneer of course Drexler was involved in all that and many many other people and you know it boggles the mind to think of how the what the world would be like if we didn't have things like Star Trek and Star Wars in it um, people like to make fun of people like myself and others who enjoy these things uh, science fiction stupid it's silly it's it's whatever yet if you look at the top say 10 grossing movies of all time nine of them I'll bet you nine of them are science fiction movies E.T. Star Wars uh, the Avengers uh, what it you know Avatar I rest my case I rest my case if science fiction was such a uh, joke uh, those movies would never make the money they make so and movies like Titanic, you know, granted they're not science fiction, but uh, the guy who made Titanic, you know, he also made Aliens, The Abyss, you know. I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. Forgive me. Uh, I apologize. I am really bad with names. Really good with faces, bad with names. So, anyways, the bomb popped into Mind Trek uh, chat. He comes and goes. This is the Centaur. It was uh, one of my other builds. I really, really love building this ship. Uh, it was a ship you see in DS9, Deep Space Nine. Uh, Charlie Rhodes, I think, was the guy they named as the captain. Oddly, I can remember that guy's name, but I can't remember anything else. I, I could have that name wrong. Who knows? Anyways, I built this last year. It was, I think, my second or third solo build. Uh, this is again one of the monumentous halls. I just basically took it, cleaned it up, uh, made it a little bit larger to try and scale it correctly, and took some inspirations from 14 Joiner and Bleebop because they had started one, and basically uh, made it my own. And even to this day, I sit here and I look at this build and I, I, I love it. I don't want to go inside it because I'm afraid that if I do, I'll start ripping walls out and want to fix things, modernize it. Um, it's old school, uh, meaning that it's the, well, I'll just show you, we'll go inside. Here are my patented piston doors. It's based off of the design that uh, Enterprise D currently uses. Uh, pumpkin lighting, I'll go ahead and turn off uh, gamma light here. We have pumpkin lighting, uh, or maybe not, nope, we have glowstone lighting, so this is not pumpkin, uh, it is uh, I think Interstone. Here, let me turn off the resource pack and you can see just how hideous these builds are. <laughs> As you can see, it is a hideous build without the texture pack. Okay, so we're going to turn the texture pack back on here. Uh, again, I use a custom texture pack, so it's uh, basically the Mind Track pack, except that I've made two changes in it uh, for my own personal aesthetic um, choices. Excuse me. And um, this is one of the first designs I really tried my own. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you could go. These originally were control panels, but now they're just sides of control panels. I wanted to have a ship where you got the feel that you were on board a starship. Um, that's why I went with a single wide uh, Jeffrey's tube here. And I wanted to make sure all the Jeffrey's tubes connected because on a lot of the other builds, they, they weren't interconnecting. Even on the New Orleans, um, the, some of the Jeffrey's tubes, um, I had to go back and retrofit them to get them to fit correctly and, you know, uh, link up is the word I'm looking for. And so I wanted to set out with the Centaur to make sure that they all linked up from the get-go and I didn't want to have to go back and reset them. So anyways, I think Blee Bob helped, not Blee Bob, but uh, Bomb. The bomb helped me set this up. Uh, this is one of our early bridge designs. You can tell it uses older stuff, but eh, it still looks good. 
Of course, if I were to modernize this with the newer texture pack in mind, a lot of the stuff would probably stay the same. Some of it would change. Um, you know, maybe one of these days I'll come back in and revisit this and rip it all out and start over. And over here we have the New Orleans. Now this was another design, um, Monumentous Hall. I resized it again. The one thing I did not do, which I wish I would have done, um, I did not clean the hull. This is one of my first uh, 3D builds. In fact, this is the first 3D build I did. Uh, I just took the hull, I built it, and in retrospect, as you can see, it's all blocky and not real well formed around the edges. It's Especially, you can see it right through here. Uh, this is very embarrassing uh, to look at now. But overall, this is I love this build. Uh, I love this ship. The design is by far one of my favorites. Um, I will eventually fix this. I will replace all of these jagged edges with actual rounded, uh, correct shape um, symmetry. I only have to do it to half the ship, and then I can mirror it to the other half. Little tidbit thing there I learned. Um, I wanted to put as much detail as I could into this build because this was the first ship that uh, they let me free build um, and that they would import on here. Uh, granted I was working on the Sovereign at the time but it hadn't been imported yet. Uh, this was you know import unseen and they let me do it and I did a lot of the work on the server uh, as much as I could do and you know my nephew he helped me with a lot of it on the interior stuff and it was a lot of fun to build. These are my own personal design shuttlecraft things. I I built a whole fleet of these things for the for use with the Sovereign, so I started putting them in other builds as well because, eh, quite frankly, I like them. And in the end, that's all that really matters, what I like. But I like the New Orleans class. Uh, she's a beautiful ship, in my opinion. A lot of fun to design. I will eventually go back through here and rebuild a lot of it. Uh, the hall-wise, interior-wise, I don't think I'll do anything to other than maybe clean up some artifact problems that I found. But overall, great build, a lot of fun. Love how these nacelles came out. <laughs> it just, I just love it. I just the hull, <laughs> those jagged edges around the hull. I gotta fix those. It's it, it mandates that it gets fixed. This is the Sovereign. Uh, she has a completely block by block placed hull. In other words, this is not a 3D hull, and I guess many of you figured that out already. Uh, this was about 75% built on this game server. Portions of her obviously had to be built off server at the time because we didn't have all the tools to uh, move about all the big parts that needed to be moved about, like the uh, struts had to be properly raised, and the only way to do that was with MC Edit, and that had to be done off server. The nacelles were completely built on server. Well, this nacelle was, and then we mirrored it to the other side. Um, I built it basically, uh, I designed the decks based off of blueprints. We imported the decks at height, and I went around and placed blocks to fill in the decks. And then I went through the ship and placed all the, uh, the corridor walls and so on and such forth. And even today the Sovereign is still, even though it's uh, blocky looking and not real 3D polished, it's still a very, very nice, nice build. I, I love this ship. Uh, even when I go inside of it, the, the build style is different from how even I built the New Orleans over there. Uh, the corridors are different layout designs, the turbo lifts are much, much wider, don't use iron. Bleebob 14, I think it was, or Bleebob uh, built the shuttle. It's basically, if you wanted to, you could literally, if you had the, the bright mod, fly the shuttle away from the ship. Uh, unfortunately, it always crashed the game when I tried it, so I gave up on it. But the Sovereign um, has a lot of unique hull shapes that um, when you're building a ship like this freestyle, or freehand, or whatever you want to call it, it's really hard to nail them. I think I did a really good job, uh, given how little I knew about what I was doing at the time. 
and when I compared it to the 3D hull, I realized that this design was way smaller than the actual true size of the Sovereign class. So this is why we call this one the Baby Sovereign. She's about half again too small compared to the full size Enterprise E, uh, which is a shame because the Enterprise E is going to be a massively, massive, <laughs> massively, it's going to be a massive undertaking. Uh, one many of us are looking forward to, but we're waiting until the D is to a point where we can say it's completed. As you can see there is a lot of detail in this ship. Uh, the deck plans we used for were based off the strategic design deck plans. Um, they are lacking. There were a lot of areas that were not uh, fleshed out or completed that had to be done. Um, a lot of creative license was used on this build. A lot of the turbo lifts didn't connect. Uh, a lot of the Jeffries tubes went nowhere. This is a turbo lift. Originally there was water in these. Uh, there is no longer any water in them. I like these wider turbo lifts. I'll be honest with you. Uh, to me this looks more like an actual turbo lift should look instead of you know iron all the way around. But the iron one was what we used for the uh, Enterprise D so that was the standard at the time and still is the standard practice. I'm sure eventually that will get changed and the iron blocks will be removed and you know we'll end up with something different. Um, but right now, I like the way this is. I won't change this. Um, to me, it just it has the right feel for this build. I tried to pack in as much detail as I could, uh, based off of the blueprints and the design for this build. Again, you know, like this section here, it did not connect in any way, shape, or form. This here is all me. At this point back here, this is where it would stop. I built design all this through here so that these two turbo lifts would actually connect. Sections of the turbo lifts would connect between the ships. And if you look up in the upper right hand corner of my uh, screen you can see, uh, I'll see if I can get it to enlarge. It's been a while since I've used the, well, let's try X. There we go. You can see the detail of the ship. It's kind of blurry, but you know, you get the gist of it. Sovereign's not a small ship, and to think that the Sovereign herself is half again the size of the Enterprise E, it says a lot about the true size of the Enterprise E. She is a very long ship. And if I can find my way out of here, uh, we'll just go down through here and go out through the captain's yacht. Um, there's a little hatch hidden down here someplace. I just gotta remember where it's at. There it is. And we'll drop down. And we're out. I went back through and I redesigned part of the ship after it was built. Uh, I redesigned the deflector dish thing here. Uh, this was one of the reasons it tipped us off that the ship itself wasn't scaled correctly. The, pl the blueprints themselves weren't. It's because, you know, hey. Let's face it, you, know, you saw this in the movie and it was a lot bigger. Well, with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. It's going to take probably all night for uh, it or any of the other videos I've recorded today to finish uploading. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Uh, I wish you all the best and hasta la vista.